Hi friends, I'm Ashley, and welcome to Darling Cottage Diary. Today we're continuing our DIY gift series with eight gifts you can make from a wax seal. And I have a small collection, but if you just have one single seal, <laughs> you can make any of these. A few of them might need to be adapted depending on the size that you have, but any of them can be made from the little half inch ones all the way up to some of the larger ones. So. Hopefully I can walk you through some of those adaptations and it helps. All of the ones I'm showcasing, I purchased fair and square from a company called Paper World. And uh, you can use my code uh, below as well as the link in the description box to get 15% off. I've really liked everything I've ordered from them so far. The shipping can take a little while. <laughs> Sometimes I get, when I do order from them, I've gotten them within a couple of days and then sometimes it's taken up to two weeks. It kind of depends on if they're back ordered on things. They go through their inventory pretty quickly um, and constantly change out their inventory as well. So some of their stuff is limited edition. So if you see something you like, definitely grab it. So everything from the little deer wax melter here to pretty much everything I'm using except for a couple of the wax sticks I've gotten from Paper World. So. I've been happy with everything with varying degrees of love it to eh, it's all right. I'll kind of talk about the black wax hexagonal pieces. I do like, they are pretty shiny um, even after you've poured and they stay shiny. So they do have a little bit higher melting temp. So sometimes you have to hold it closer to the flame, but for the most part, I really like the black wax. The first idea I had was taking just a regular candle. This is one of those bigger <laughs> pillar candles and just dressing it up and making it pretty. So taking a cheap, you know, dollar, two dollar candle and turning it into, um, you know, something that looks a lot more elevated. And yeah, don't put your hand on the metal seal like I did. <laughs> it was hot, um, but it's easier to do this whenever the candle is wider so i definitely recommend doing big ones but i've done this even down to like candle sticks so dressing up candle is fun we'll finish the candle in a little bit i wanted to get all of the wax seal making out of the way first then show you how they all came together towards the end so this one is one of the half inch pieces people I see people asking all the time, <laughs> um, how do you clean the spoons? You basically, you get all the wax out that you can, you know, with it being hot. And then I just use a paper towel. You could use uh, some scrap fabric, but just be really careful. Wear leather gloves if you're sensitive to heat because it is very hot, obviously. Um, but that's how I clean mine. Or you can put it in a heat proof dish and pour boiling water on it. That will also cause the wax to come off and float to the top of the water. So I have two colors in this brand of box. This is my favorite sealing wax of all of them that I've tried. It has a pretty high wax content and I don't know, it just pours the best. It does for the most part stay shiny, especially around the edges of the wax after you've um, made an impression and I hope you like my little silently judging <laughs> lady plate. Uh, she's gonna she's gonna judge us on our wax pouring which I'm not great at but it is fun regardless. So just kind of all of my tips and tricks up at the front and then we'll talk more about what I'm turning these into later. When it comes to surfaces that you're pouring on obviously if you're using it to act as a seal for a letter or paper you can pour directly on the paper, but if you want to use the seals for these kind of projects, you don't have to have the expensive like marble crystal plates <laughs> to make the sealing wax work. Um, as you can see, I'm just using a porcelain plate with a piece of recycled plastic uh, packaging that I got from a sticker sheet set. And just to protect the plate because you don't want to cross pollinate your crafting stuff with anything you eat off of. And I don't really eat off of this plate, but I also don't want the, the screen print on the back, the painting on the back to get messed up. So um, just ways to make things aesthetic without ruining anything. <laughs> that clear plastic does a lot to um, help protect the surface and you can um, you know rotate those out as needed. So we're moving on to a 
clear wax. I like to call it my honey wax because <laughs> that's the color it is. It has a very high melting point. I have to hold the spoon almost in a flame to get it to melt completely to where it's, I'm comfortable pouring it. So that is something to consider when you're using any wax that is on the clearer side. It is really neat because you can pour it over things like dried flowers or um, resin inclusions or little charms or strings or anything you want to be seen through the seal. But as you can see here, I didn't get the wax hot enough, so it didn't want to pour and it also started cooling as it hit the plate. <laughs> it was just, this was kind of a, a bad run. So I want y'all to see my mistakes because I definitely make them. I'm not an expert with wax sealing, but I do enjoy it. So <laughs> this is um, an early experiment. I had the idea of creating a little kind of sun catcher piece. This one, I held the spoon right over the flame um, that I, I had burning beside the little, the little deer oven and it performed much better. So I wanted to create a little sun catcher ornament you can make a couple of these to hang in a window and another thing using the clear ones you don't have to worry about it melting <laughs> it would if it was in a hot car in texas don't do that but in your house um you know you don't have to worry about the clear ones melting because they do take a lot of heat so moving on to the wax sticks these are some of them that i got at a big craft store and they pour all right but they, as you can see, they get soot in them a lot. Um, I'm not sure if that's the quality of the wax or the string or what's going on, but I've had that issue with the same, with those same sticks. So that's kind of frustrating. Um, what I'm doing right here is making a pretty little background for a necklace charm. I made myself a necklace, I guess it was last holiday season <laughs> or maybe the one before that. I don't know. I... I'll have to do a video one time on my various online businesses I've had. I used to make jewelry and had a pretty successful business, but I wanted to pivot away because I don't know. I <laughs> was at the point where I needed to invest in a lot of equipment and I was a lot happier doing paper crafts. So anyway, I just wanted to make a pretty little background. Um, these round pieces, the cabochon uh, holder backgrounds, those I got pretty cheaply <laughs> on Amazon. I'll have those listed in uh, one of my lists. So you can check that link in the description as well. And you could use you know, the plate to create the perfect edge of a wax seal and then glue it into the necklace piece. But I wanted it to look like it was somebody pouring it straight onto a letter. So I wanted it to be more freestyle, I guess. <laughs> and um, as you can see, it touched the edge, but I don't know, I kind of liked the imperfection of it. It's kind of my, kind of my aesthetic. So, um, but, and then of course, knowing me, it needs a little bit of sparkle. It just needed a little extra. So I, this is one of the newer little charms that I got um, for the walnut mixture I just posted. So very excited about how it came out. And the M, the initial seal, I did get that um, at a shop in Salem. I forgot to mention that at the beginning. That one's not from Paper World, but it had my initial and it's such a cute little, it's a cute little stamp. So I wanted to use that one. <laughs> anyway, just jumping back to the little sun catcher piece. I wanted to give it a little bit of a dimension, but still be able to see the flower through it. So I'm just adding some uh, blue mica powder against the sky background left the mountainous <laughs> part of the stamp clear and um, painted the celestial bodies silver so that it gives a little bit of dimension but it's still this kind of glossy world that you can only see if you're looking hard at it and i figured that would be pretty hanging in a window so that was that one i'm just adding some gold thread <laughs> if you are a sewer, a seamstress, whatever you call it, embroiderer, you know the limits of metallic thread. It's so hard to work with, but I felt like it was going to complement this very well. So that's the string I used to add for that. And 
just as a thought here, especially with the necklace and the jewelry, I feel like those would be really good gifts, not only for yourself, but for anybody who is academic or bookish or wishes she was a Victorian lady in some, I don't know, far away castle. <laughs> so another bookish idea I had was to make a bookmark. Um, I really like the fabric ones that have the charms at either ends and then have just a piece of lace or a piece of ribbon going through the center of the book. I find those really pretty, especially stacked up and since stacking books on various places all over my house is my major design aesthetic. I like having pretty bookmarks to look at <laughs> with those. They don't work well if you're gonna be putting it on a shelf, um, but this is the one that's meant to be used if it's like on your nightstand or something. So I poured the wax straight onto one end of the lace and on the other end, I used what, I actually don't know what it's called, but you can find them in the jewelry section <laughs> of uh, various craft stores pretty cheaply. They come in a little set like this. It's supposed to be a clasp for a ribbon necklace, but as you can see, it has little teeth on it and you just crimp it closed. And then you can put whatever charm on the end of it that you want. So <laughs> I had a hard time deciding which charm I wanted. But with the season and Ephemera Club's um, chosen monthly theme of woodland, I don't know, the pine cone, the pine cone stuck for me, so. And before I continue, I do want to thank my Ephemera Club this month for supporting me on Patreon. Donna, Kristen, Cindy, Abigail, Kathleen, Joanna, Rebecca, Sasha, Patsy, Teresa, Effie, Kim, Emily, Carly, Carrie, Leprechaun Mom, Crystal, Tracy, Britt, Alicia, Kenna, Rachel, Denise, W, Jennifer, Ariel, and Rasha. If you don't know what Ephemera Club is, it is um, a monthly subscription to help support making new videos, and you also get both digital and, um, depending on your tier, you get digital journal prompts and uh, printable ephemera from me as well as um, and the higher tier you receive an actual little packet from me a little envelope of handmade and um, sourced vintage ephemera to use in your own journals so if you're interested in checking that out feel free to follow the link in the description box and we have a lot of fun anyway if you're interested we'd love to have you I'm already working on next month's um, ephemera. We voted on the theme a little bit early because of the holidays. I knew I know I'm going to be busy, so I wanted to get on top of those. The theme is going to be glimmers, which sounds like a lot of sparkly things, which it certainly will be. But if you don't know what glimmers are in like the psychological world, it's the idea of the opposite of a trigger. You hear somebody of getting triggered, and it makes them think of something bad that's happened to them, or makes them upset. A glimmer is opposite. It, it triggers nostalgia or it triggers a happy memory or it triggers, you know, the smell of cinnamon is a big one for me. <laughs> um, uh, seeing sunlight hit the trees in a certain way, like it, anything can be a glimmer and taking a moment to notice them makes such a big difference, If especially if you're having a rough day, just, or journaling about them. Maybe I'll do a journal entry about glimmers as the year comes to an end, like my glimmers of 2023 or something. The point is, before I started meandering, <laughs> that is the December theme for Ephemera Club. Everything will be very sparkly and cozy and happy, and that's what I'm shooting for in both the digital and um, physical ephemera that I'll be creating. So moving on, talking about the candle I just finished up, if you are going to add the stamping with a stencil, do that before you pour a wax seal on it, it will create a more even stenciling. Uh, that was a last minute decision after I had already done the initial wax seal and anyway, it'll be more even. <laughs> so if you feel the necessity to be extra in that way, definitely do that first. Here, I just, I don't know, I was experimenting because I didn't want to keep using just the silver and gold paint pens and wanted to see if I could add some glitter to make an extra sparkly uh, tree ornament. I just glued it onto, I don't know, it's the old chandelier crystals that I found for a couple of cents in a thrift store. 
and I don't know I like how it turned out so maybe maybe I'll try red or a metallic wax next time so that it's extra extra shimmery we'll see so just finishing these up adding a couple of details I don't know when especially with handmade gifts I feel like details are everything of just the attention that somebody paid to something they made you is is important and the glue I'm using is just regular school glue <laughs> I learned from the bird though I was I went ahead and added it and then I brushed off the excess and that made a much cleaner glitter footprint is that a term glitter footprint whatever I'm coining it so this one we will be adding a very strong magnet to to create what is called a needle minder if you don't know what that is and you don't do hand sewing I'll demonstrate later this one it's so nice and I don't know it, it was very detailed so I decided to just highlight the frame and her crown maybe you could use a little makeup um, on the edges of her face to bring out her features but the wax was so light I didn't feel like I needed to do that because the light hit it just right I am putting holes in this to run a ribbon through it it is going to be a new closure for my poor chunky journal as you'll see in a bit but first the pink one I wanted to turn into a little set of drink markers so if you're at a party and everybody's drinking out of nice stemware this allows you to keep track of whose drink is whose we don't want to be spreading any more germs over the holiday season so moving on to my my big button girly she is going to help me keep this poor journal intact she's chonky she's made she she's been with me for a lot of journaling and the closure as you can see no longer works I've I've just about sat on this thing to try to get it to close and it is beyond reproach at this point so this is a stretchy ribbon that I'm using and the wax seal is just extra extra prettiness but I left some room um, and threaded the ribbon through the real enclosure as well to help just keep it organized so it's not flopping all over the place in my cabinet and it did cover up the jewel but it's all right <laughs> it's it's still there this is a needle minder um, throwing your needle throwing but yeah you can set your needle on it and it won't get lost as you're working on hand embroidery or uh, cross stitch very big in uh, the, the sewing community anyway I really hope you enjoyed all of these ideas I hope you can implement some of them for your friends and family or for yourself if you would like to see a part two on this I have more ideas if you'd like to move on to um, more paper go back to paper crafty things please let me know in the comments otherwise if you liked this video and you'd like to see more content like this I post every Sunday and hopefully I see you next week have a good week, everybody. Thank you for being here. Bye.